I am very kindly asking you to just ignore the state of my hair because um, it's the weekend and I am alone at home because my husband is um, at his family's place and I just have time to film and I actually don't want to wash my hair because I try to not wash it too often so I go through this state on the weekends. Um, if I can live with that, you can too. So welcome to this um, very clickbaity title, uh, Get Ready With Me. But you know, let's be honest, clickbait titles are the titles that make you click. Um, actually, I'm, <laughs> I'm like that too. Uh, if I would have read such a title, I would completely look at the video. But I want to talk about the, um, or no, I want to combine two videos because I'm a lazy fuck. I want to do some um, favorites of June, just stuff that I really enjoy using. But I also want to talk about my upcoming plans and the, I don't want to really say toxicity of this community, but maybe a bit. So we do combine videos and we're getting ready together. Except the eye makeup because I want to film the eye makeup in a separate video. Let me just show you what I want to use. I do have the new Isamaya Beauty palette and I do want to do a dip dive. A dip dive? Oh, fuck me. A deep dive video on Isamaya Frank as an artist, on the Isamaya brand and of course on the palette. So I will keep that um, for the other one. So let's get started uh, with the first favorite and that is primer for the face. And this month I have been kind of like revisiting um, a primer that I have over a year and I have used years ago when it was the favorite of everybody. The, what's it called? The Hourglass Mineral Veil Primer. Do you remember that? And when I bought this last year because I had this, I don't know, thing of... I want to revisit old makeup items that are still around. Um, I, instead of uh, buying the usual size, I did buy the big size, the jumble size. That is like, I don't know, 90 euro, but it has a much better value because you, by the end, you pay less, um, less per, for this primer. And I really enjoy this and I have been concentrating my usage like exclusively on this one and I don't know why because the mineral veil is more like a winter primer to me yes I do have winter and summer primers um, but it does work it's fine I still like it's not fine it, it's it's the thing that I just like the most this month and I really enjoy this does it cost an arm and a leg of course it's hourglass but it's a good one the topic I want to talk about in addition to the favorites thing is um, not easy to talk about, but I think um, somebody should have to. Um, and some creators that I follow already address that in later or in, in, in past videos. And I just want to have my own take on it. And that is, um, how do people feel that do start out with this? Or like in this space? Because... When I started this whole thing with YouTube or with Instagram, like it be better Instagram because that I'm doing much, much longer. And if you don't follow me, it's Elogram underscore underscore makeup. And on TikTok, it's Elogram dot makeup. But I started to post like photos of products and photos of my eye looks a while ago, actually, and nothing really happened because I didn't put any effort into it. Like, let's be real, that was of, totally on me. But a while back when I lost the fun with my food blog that I also had for years, I started to post much more makeup over there on, on my Instagram channel. And suddenly I basically started to grow and that gave me some kind of self-confidence that maybe that is not the worst idea in this world to do that. And I'm completely lost with the order of my makeup because usually after that I do eyes. But okay, we, we can do that. We, we can take this in a different direction. And it does not take a long time to realize that those people who are 
like going viral or people who are successful are the ones who either are extremely loud and controversial and like just give other people something to talk about because gossiping is like the <laughs> um okay there is in um evolutionary psychology and behavior analysis there is this thing called the gossip theory and the gossip theory mainly um, takes on the importance of the development of, of human speech um, literally for socializing and the core of this theory is that we started speaking years, millions, thousands, hundreds of thousands years ago um, because of socializing and gossiping because gossiping is bringing communities together you can't deny that it is what it is. For foundation today, I'm using the Estee Lauder Future Hydra Rescue, which is definitely not a new product on the market, but I discovered that recently because I saw people, or like a longer time ago, I saw people comparing this to the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation, but I don't know. I think I like this a bit more than Charlotte Tilbury. I'm really enjoying this, and I wear shade 10N Porcelain. But before that, we need something to glow up the skin, and I always use underpainting primers. And the one that really, really stole my heart in a way that I already purchased the big size is the Say Super Star, no, Super Glowy? Glowy Super Gel in Star Glow. This is like Charlotte Tilbury's um, Hollywood Flawless Filter, but better. I love that so much and why do i apply it with my my brain is completely out of order i usually apply <laughs> this with a brush and now i have just rubbed off all the concealer um you see i am really really confused today and i have no idea what's going on but that's fine confuse me is real me that's all because i'm doing my makeup in a different order pretty sure it's because of that um, so where was I? Okay, the toxicity. No, not toxicity, but I just learned really quick. You, you either have to be loud or you have to be someone who is able to catch like the newest releases a day before it is in stores. I, I especially had that phenomenon when I posted my dupe of the Natasha Denona Yaka palette because as usual the Natasha Denona palette got leaked online we saw the shades, we saw swatches already and what I did here I just basically sat down and with the info we had from the leak I duped it and I posted that um, clearly saying that uh, I I duped the palette I, like, I was not saying oh this is the I have foundation on my finger. I was not saying that this is the original Natasha Denona palette. It was in the hashtags, it was everywhere. And of course, one of the hashtags was Natasha Denona Yaka and Yaka palette, but also dupe. And uh, my, I think even my first sentence was, uh, of course, Natasha Denona got leaked or whatever. Therefore, I tried to dupe it. This is my most successful post ever. I had so many people watching or seeing this post, not everybody interacting with it, but this post got shared over a hundred times, which for me, as a very, very small creator with like 60, 660 followers on Instagram, that was a fucking lot. People liked, commented, and I, you know, even though when you're not tagged, now you see when people share your photo, and I, I just saw the people who shared it, and the comments were hilarious, like, oh, this is not my vibe, and oh, thank God somebody swatched it already. And I was like, did you even read the post? Like, do, do you even see what I wrote down? I mean, joke's on you, not on me. Thank you for sharing. But that made me so clear in my head what I, of course, already knew. But if you are able to catch the newest releases in the moment they launch, you win the internet. You do. You win the whole beauty community. By the way, my concealer love for this month is the Chanel Sublimage 
Le Correcteur Yeux. Um, this is a 100 euro concealer, but it, it's just, to be honest, it's worth every single cent. And I am debating if I should get another shade of this because this is B10. Um, uh, I mean, you see that it is, it's a bit peachy. When I blend it out, it, it works, but I, I want to try the other shade. But on the Chanel website, you can't get any discounts, so I have to pay the full 100 euro. And currently, that's not what I want to do, but it's a bit too peachy, a bit too yellow. And I know this looks wild now, but we are going... I just basically applied too much, because this is the worst packaging for a concealer that you could ever imagine and I don't know who approved that and don't get me wrong I already knew that like that's not a secret of course people who are showing the news releases are attracting interests it's totally normal same was um you know I do YouTube not like I think I started this month with YouTube in June that's it's not this month it's July but I started in June with YouTube and the long form video that got the most views at this point is my first impression of the Charlotte Tilbury lip blurs. Oh, what a surprise. I mean, I did not buy them to review them, to be honest. I bought them out of curiosity because when I saw them the first time, my first thought was, oh, this is Rare Beauty Lip Souffle. That's the exact same thing, but it isn't. Like, they're very similar, but I... I prefer the Charlotte Tilbury a bit more, so I will use them today in this favorites video. But, you know, people click that video, they, they just love that. And I do have something in my eye. But that is just so, I don't want to say it's annoying. It's, it's a little bit frightening that this is what people love. I mean, it's completely natural, but times of tutorial YouTube are over. That was in 2014, 2000, 2015, when all we knew about makeup was that the sponge applicators are probably not the best, and that's it. Now we are f way, way more advanced in makeup. I mean, look at those teenagers. The way they look with 13, 14 are older than me. That That's just... How am I supposed to see how old somebody is by the way they now do their makeup? Isn't that impressive how the shade just kind of adjusted after blending it out? That's, uh, that's the only thing that is against me buying the shade um, 02 from Chanel. There was no really outstanding cream bronzer this month for me, so I'm using the one in my favorites video. This is the Tarte Sculpt Tape, and I use the shade Cool Bronze. I do two dots on my face, and then I just pat it in and slightly blend it upwards. And by the way, quick tip, if you struggle with these uh, type of bronzer or contour products, go get yourself a dense angled brush. This is the Fenty Beauty 125 face brush and there is a similar one from Made by Mitchell that is probably a bit more affordable, but they work wonders. I was even about to declutter the original Charlotte contour one because I just could not make it work, but then I was like, okay, I give it one last try with this brush and that changed my mind completely. I also don't have an outstanding favorite blush for June because I mostly used my Project Pan blush, which is the Rose Ink Lip and Cheek Color in Heliotrope. So let me just apply that. So the problem that I see with this, like, oh, you get the most views when you have the newest thing is people who are desperate in getting into this community, beauty community, and be successful in it, they start spending money they don't have, and um, that is a point where I am at the moment. I don't make a big secret out of it. I did spend money that I do not have. I made debts because of that. I found a solution for that, but the consequence that I face now is that I will go on a complete no-buy now. And I allowed myself some, like 
final products to buy. So for example, this palette, um, I bought the new Lethal collection and I bought the Bunny, <laughs> Blend Bunny Cosmetics, the Sugar and Grunge. But after that, for the rest of the year, is at least what I set my goal as, I won't buy any makeup besides maybe a backup. Uh, but that also depends because I do have I do have one of those Alex drawers in my desk here and I have one of the bigger drawers is full of backup makeup. It is full of products that I bought because I saw them and I was like, oh, I need that. I definitely need that. I don't. I haven't opened it. There, there is stuff inside that drawer that I haven't opened in over a year. It's sitting in there. For example, I had a very serious Rare Beauty obsession by the end of 2021 and I started to buy stuff from Rare Beauty. I do have both of the primers, the, um, or is it a primer or a setting spray, the 4-in-1 thing? No, I think this is a setting spray and something else. It, I mean, it's travel size, which is fine, but they're unopened in my drawer. I do have the Huda Beauty, the, uh, the glowish, um, Blur Jam, the primer, unopened. The RMS Re-Evolved Primer that I bought because I had a, a tiny, um, like a tester from it, which I really love, bought it in my drawer, unopened. So the outstanding highlight for June this month um, is, well, not the Pat McGrath blushes, it's the, wait a minute, this packaging, is that supposed to? We don't like it. Okay, it doesn't matter. Is the um, Skin Fetish Highlighting Block Balm due in the new shade Cyber Lotus? I completely fell in love with this, and I think this is one of the most incredible highlighters ever. I actually, after I used this, bought two other shades. I do have also Cyber Orchid, and I have the nude one. And to be honest, I do not regret that because both are amazing. And I do apply the balm directly on the face and then I go over it and stipple around with a stippling brush like that. Since I also don't have a real like outstanding under eye setting powder, I'm using the Huda Beauty Cherry Blossom Cake um, and set my under eyes with that. And you know, um, that is the, the pink powder is a good thing. Um, pink powder has been around forever and Pink powder is nothing new. I have two of those pink powders, the Huda Beauty Cherry Blossom and the Westman Atelier setting powder in the pink bubble shade. But recently two brands came out also with pink powder. One, Vanessa Myricks. Um, she has the, is it the Evolutionary Powder? I don't know what it's called, but in a pink version. And One Size Beauty by Patrick Starr came out with that. And all I could think of at this point was, I want to have both. And then I was like, why? Why do you want to have both? It's so unnecessary to have both. Yeah. And then I tried to <laughs> tell myself, oh, you need to have both just for the sake of reviewing and comparing them to the Huda Beauty one. But instead, I can tell you, you guys, I'm 100% sure if you have this Huda Beauty powder, don't buy the Nessa Myricks or the One Star one because it's literally the same thing. It's a loose, finely melted powder and I am, by the reviews, 100% sure that the quality of those is incredible because both are apparently really good brands. Even though I have not tried Patrick Star or the One Size brand at all, but I've tried some of the Nessa Myricks products. They are good. They are really, really good. They come from the perspective of a makeup artist. So I'm pretty sure that the Nessa Myricks pink powder is good. But if you have this one, it's also good. It is absolutely stunning. And you get so much... Pro this is 20 grams of product and I have no idea in what life I should use that up. Since I focused in June also a lot on face powder that was in my project pen, I'm now using a one that I also love. This is the Milk Makeup Blur and Set. Unfortunately, a powder you can't get anymore. Another good example of me buying stuff I don't need. When I bought this, and I have never heard about this powder before, to be honest. I bought this, I, I opened it, I tried it, and I was like, oh, this is a good powder. 
And then I went on YouTube to a channel that I have been following for a longer time. It's a German YouTuber. And she did uh, like a favorites or something and mentioned actually this powder in her favorites. And then she said, this is discontinued. And then I started to do my research and I was like, oh fuck, it's really discontinued. And the first thing I did was go back on Sephora and buy a powder. So I have this one that is nearly full because you get, let me just check that, 25 grams of product and I have one completely unopened in my drawer. I mean, I am not somebody who is throwing out makeup just because there is a 12 or a 24 on the back of the product because I don't believe in that. I also don't believe in those dates when it comes to food because the only way to find out if a food has gone bad or not is to to smell it, to touch it, thus it has had the consistency change, changed, or maybe even as long as it's safe, just taste it, lick it, whatever. You will not die when you drink out of that milk packaging and you realize that milk is sour. You will not die from that. The only food product that I am like a little bit over sensitive for is chicken, chicken and fish because salmon, sal salmonella, I think it's salmonella, the correct English word, that's really dangerous. But other than that, nothing will happen. And when meat, for example, turns bad or steak or whatever, you will smell that. Believe me, you smell it. Or an egg, you smell that. Once in my life I cracked a, a egg that went bad um, before that uh, suspicious date and uh, I had to throw away the whole pan because I could not bear that smell. So the consequence of what I have done, like literally overspending and going into debt for that, is now, as I said, me going on a nearly 100% no buy for the rest of the year. Um, I have come to an agreement with my husband because he was like, I mean, he's not against me buying makeup. He accepts the fact that the whole makeup thing here is my hobby, that I love that, this is what brings me joy. So for example, I, the sugar uh, and grunge palette from Red Bunny Cosmetics, 100% I do have these shades already because I have 88 palettes here. But still, this palette, I don't have these colors in that curation, that brings me joy. And he is fully, fully understanding and supporting me, but we made that agreement that, um, Instead of just buying stuff and not telling him and hiding that, I I just ask him because um, it's our money. We are responsible for the money both. We do not, uh, so we do have like separate uh, bank accounts, but basically uh, one pays the uh, credits for the house, the bank lo loans. I think in America it's the mortgage, but a mortgage, mortgage, mortgage. But in Germany we don't have that because we, we we lend money from the bank and that is not what we have to pay back. I have no idea what the correct English word is. Sometimes my brain is just it's just going somewhere. Um, so it's our money that I I spend and it's our future that I risk for that. Um, that's I think that is not a shame to admit that I I do have a problem. And I've had that problem before, over 10 years ago. I was addicted to shopping, I overcome this. And I don't wanna call myself at this point addicted to shopping because I'm far away from that point mentally that I was over 10 years ago. But I, I'm in a place where I, I buy stuff for the sake of having it and not for the sake of using it. And that is where I have to draw the line for me and myself and what I have to learn. A very nice example of that sake of having it and not sake of using it is my um, uh, Shantakai Future Skin Foundation. This is one of my top favorite foundation. If you saw my top three foundation, this is number two. And the top that I had went bad. It started to smell like paint. It was like, I mean, I, I do have a fresh one here now and it smells also not good, but not that bad because that had like a distinct alcoholic scent. And the first thing I did, so I realized, oh no, my future skin went bad. I decluttered it, went over to Cult Beauty and bought a new one. 
I have 25 foundations here, 25 opened foundations. Do I need another foundation? No. But yet, I'm interested in the new Bobbi Brown um, vitamin enriched skin tints. I don't need them. No, I will not buy them. No, we will talk about that and will I buy it? And I will say no. And I haven't said anything about the brows because I don't have an outstanding brow product besides one. And that's the Too Faced uh, Fluff and Hold. This is surprisingly really good brown product. I did not expect that. I have used this now for I think four months or so. And it's still going strong. I really enjoy that. And this gives you the crunched uh, brows that will not move for years. Maybe even survive apocalypse. So the main question is of course now, how do I prevent myself from spending and from shopping products? And my, the first idea that I have is duping, which I already have done with my eyeshadow palettes. I, I dupe new ones, I did that as a series on my Instagram channel, and maybe I turn that into a video series, I'm not too sure. And with foundations, I don't need foundations at this point. I don't need powders at this point. I have a whole Alex drawer that is full with powders. There's nothing else in there, just face and ombre powders. I have a very surprising brown, uh, powder bronzer winner, the new NARS Laguna. This is so good. Um, they basically redid Laguna bronzer and added shades. Like you don't have Laguna, you now have Laguna 0 to 8, I think. So I am now able to use Laguna too, which I wasn't before. And see, that is something else. Why did I buy this? Because I was interested in that, because I wanted to see, can I now wear Laguna 00? Without researching, without swatching, without comparisons. I just bought it because I wanted it. An outstanding blush this month is one of the new Dior blushes and I bought those because I am personally a fan of the original Rosy Glow in Pink. To me it has color payoff. I've seen a lot of TikTok videos lately, people complaining like that there is literally no color payoff, but I don't know what they did to their blushes, but mine looks absolutely gorgeous. I still think that these little fuckers with their 4.4 grams are just overpriced, but I love it. And I want to say that especially the shade Rosewood just got my heart. What I also will do is I start a new series here for the long form videos. I will do brand reviews. And in those brand reviews, we will talk from A to Z about a brand. So for example, about um, Adept Cosmetics. And then I will re review to you every product that I own from that brand. And not only that, we will also kind of deep dive into the brand. Who was it founded by? How long has it been around? Are there any controversies? Because I just want to... First of all, I, I do have a problem finding ideas for long short videos that... Uh, for long long content videos that are more than just get ready with me. Um, I also don't have a lot of time to do that. So a brand review with like notes that I can prepare for that video are good to do for me in the mornings. I don't have to use every single palette or every single product, but still it's easy to do for me, especially and tell you just thoughts about these products. For the um, short content, I thought of doing a swatch every single palette that I own from A to Z. Like we start with the Adapt Cosmetics, um, what would be the first one? I don't know, the Inspired I think. Yeah, but I will just swatch all of them and all in under a minute. That was an idea and just in general playing more with what I have talking more about what I have and even referring to what's new with what I have. So I'm skipping powder highlighter because I want to use a shade of this palette for that. So we're going straight into lips. Oh no, I forgot setting spray because the it's not outstanding to me, but it's the only one that I've opened right now. It's the Milk Hydro Grip um, and Refresh Spray. People complain about the smell. Um, I like the smell actually. Oh, and if you don't have one of those fans, uh, it's the only, no, it's not the only product. I have two products from Nimia, the shape from Nick, uh, the, the brand from Nikki Tutorials. That was worth the 12 euro. If you didn't know already, I'm very extra with my makeup, as you might have seen. And 
I'm not using only a fixing powder, I always use also a finishing powder. And yes, there is a difference. And the outstanding finishing powder this month is the Sisley Blur Expert in the shade Light, of course. This is so, this is just lightweight, but yet it does something. Let's be honest, did I need that powder? Absolutely not, because I still have a nearly full Shantakai blurring powder that I'm unable to finish because I just use it in very distinct areas of my face. I did not need that, but I wanted that. I wanted that because I used up my Sisley Fido Compact and I didn't want to repurchase the Fido Compact, so I said, oh, let's buy another powder, which is just so dumb. And could that bird shut the fuck up? Don't scream fuck me in my yard. I just have to open the window because it's so warm here, even though outside it's um, raining constantly, but it's like so just uncomfortably warm. I don't like that. The discovery of the month for me this time is um, Sephora lip liners. And these are the lip stain liner. I don't know if they have others, um, but I, I was craving new lip liners because I do have um, I do have most Rare Beauty and two or three Charlotte Tilbury ones, but I was always using the same and all, not all of them paired with the lip colors, so I wanted to look for more affordable ones, and these are 10 euro each of twist ups. Um, there is no sharpen to them, but I actually think you don't need them. Now let's just do that. The shade, by the way, is very, very, very similar to Pillow Talk. Pillow Talk Medium. It's definitely more to Pillow Talk Medium. But I want to use something more light on my lips than Pillow Talk Medium, a bit more lighter. So I'm using original Pillow Talk in the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Blurs. And these just knock me off the socks. They completely surprised me with their quality. I really enjoy them. And... If you saw my first impression, I did buy Honey Blur, no, not Honey, Nude Blur, Honey is another shade, and that was a straight up orange. I actually um, sent it back and bought another one. See? And that's again a thing. I could have just sent back Nude Blur and get my money back. No, I decided to buy Rose Blur instead because I saw the videos and you know what? I haven't used rose blur since then, but it does not fit the makeup today, so that's it. So what do I want to say with that? Um, I think the beauty community can be very, very stressful to somebody who is not really controlled, um, like me, because when I see a new shiny, nice, sparkly thing, I am sitting here like, I want that shiny, nice, sparkly thing, and I don't need that shiny, nice, sparkling thing, so... I need to think of something else to like cope with that and uh, to cope with the urge to buy the newest of the news because I have that like a thousand times. Why do I have to buy something new? Why? Another good example, th that is the last one. Let me show you. This is a tiny version of the Fenty Beauty How Many Carrots Highlighter. Is that a stunning product? Yes, but I barely use it. But because I'm afraid, or no, not that I'm afraid, I heard rumors on Instagram that this is going to be discontinued. What did I do? I give you some time to guess. You guessed right. I bought the full size. It's unopened. It sits in my backup drawer, waiting for the day to be used. I think I, for myself, just have to make, make, it, make it clear in my head. That's all thing in my head. Um, I don't need to buy that. I don't need to buy the news of the news of the news to create content, to speak about something that I'm passionate about. You comment here on those videos, not only here, but also on Instagram, like how you can feel the passion and how you can feel my joy and the way that I react, because I do a lot of reaction when I apply makeup, actually on Instagram stories, because when there is a, let me show you that, one moment. So for example, yesterday I filmed with the new Gloss Gods palette and I applied this shade, this is Drizzling, for the very first time. 
I had to pause the recording of my application, took my phone and did an Instagram story because I was knocked off my socks. This shade all of a sudden fucked with my mind because this went on so beautiful that I just completely forgot that I'm a human being. And that is the passion, the joy that I feel. That is the reason why I'm sitting here. But that is also the reason why I overspent because I get so sucked into those types of products that this can destroy my financial stability. And that is something that I have to stop now. And there is this psychological theory, and not a theory, it's, it's just a thing, that if you do a commitment to people who watch that commitment, you are more likely to follow your own commitment and not lie to people because you kind of, you, you, you string yourself to that much, much tighter than when I'm sitting here alone without the camera and saying, oh, I'm not buying that. You know what, 10 minutes later, I will buy that. So, <laughs> Thank you guys for watching my little rant and my little confession that doesn't feel like a confession to me because I think we should not make it a secret of things that probably millions of people struggle with daily. So if you have the same feelings like I do about that, please let me know. Maybe we can like connect um, to each other and just um, be strong for each other. And until that, see you in the next one.